And we're going to look at verses 14 through 16. But I got a little excited again this week. And I was, and we're going to be turning, flipping through our Bibles on a few spots. I know often is always awesome at putting uh, different scriptures up there. So if you, if you don't hear the reference, uh, I, I know that you'll be able to follow along. But uh, we're, our launching point this morning is Matthew chapter 5. And I'm going to read this morning Matthew 5 verses 14 through 16. And this is what it says. You are the light of the world. Man, I love Jesus' words are encouraging to me. I hope they're encouraging to you too. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they might see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Wow. You are the light of the world. Woohoo. Woo <laughs> you are the light of the world. Those who have made the decision, who have by faith put, put their faith in Jesus Christ, we are the light of the world. Amen. It's significant. It's significant when I was thinking about this because I was reminded, as I thought about Matthew chapter 5, I was reminded of the beginning. Light is an important part of Scripture. It, 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 it's wow, impactful to the way we live and the way we walk. And it brings us this powerful identity statement, and it's going to, I think, like, wow us, just like it wowed me this week. I think the Holy Spirit wants to show us how important it is that Jesus will say to us, we are the light. So let's turn to Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to look at, at, at God's first words. And from God's first word until his last words, it, 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 it re-emphasizes this light, that we are the light, that he is the light, that light comes from him. And light, what does light always do? It always, always, always overcomes darkness. And anything, man, there's so many, I was making, I was making so many points uh, this week, I was looking through and, and just like thinking about all these different ways that light always overcomes darkness, and I'm praying, praying that we are encouraged this morning, that, that we have a significant part to play in our role in, today, in our life today, Jesus is excited about who we are, he's excited about where we are, and he's excited because we get to be a part of light overcoming darkness, of God changing the world, of God bringing restoration around us. We get to play a part in this, guys. And it's so good. So let's look. Genesis chapter 1. Okay, somebody came to me last week. I like you, Pastor, when you get excited when you preach. I'm like, yeah, I just, just can't help it. Genesis chapter 1, it says this, and it's going to start in verse 1. It says, in the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. First thing happened, first observation, first uh, outlook. Everything is dark, it's void, there's darkness over the deep, it's Leak, if nothing, the Holy Spirit's there, he's hovering over, he's holding everything together, but there's darkness everywhere, and what is God's first recorded words? Let there be light. In verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. I love that reading the Psalms this morning about his voice, that God's voice, it speaks forth, it does things, and when he speaks forth, things change, things happen. I love this verse here. God said, let there be light, and what it was. It was. When God speaks over our lives, I'm going to get all random this morning, but that's okay. I hope you guys receive everything. And God, when God speaks things over light, when God speaks things into existence, when his word goes forward, it changes things. Man, I was thinking last night as we were praying as a group, we, we meet uh, first Saturday of every month. So put it on your calendar, a reoccurring event. Every first Saturday of the month, 7 o'clock, we'll be in my office praying. And, and we're, while we were praying, man, I was 
hearing some different reports from different people, some, some, some bad things that were happening, maybe uh, some things that were, the doctors were saying about different people. And, and I was praying this, I was praying, God, would your word speak a better word? Because God, when you speak, things change. And so sometimes we get in life, we've got these negative words that are all over us, maybe the enemy, he tries to remind us of negative things that were spoken to us. And maybe life situations got us down. Maybe we go to the doctor, we get that bad report, that bad word. Uh, I'm believing that when God speaks over us, that's what I'm praying. God, would you speak over our congregation? Would you speak your words over our congregation? Because when he speaks, things change. And he always brings hope. He always brings restoration. He always speaks good things. And so God, at the very beginning, darkness was everything over everything. There was void. The Holy Spirit was hovering. And God speaks, let there be light. And there was light. And verse 4 is what I want us to get inside of us this morning. Verse 4. And God saw that the light was good. We're going to touch on that a little bit. Being in the light is a good thing. Having light is a good thing. Every time we see in Scripture, there's a difference between darkness and there's a difference between light. And the light is always a good thing. It's always positive. And darkness is always cast and the shadow. is always cast in a negative light. It's always cast opposed to God. The battle over light and darkness begin, and it continues to be a struggle between the spirit and the flesh throughout all eternity and through all of Scripture. When light comes, light brings illumination. A couple weeks ago, in the last month, I changed all the light bulbs in here, and a few people noticed. They said, they go, Pastor, it's like, it's like being at work. It's so bright in here. I said, it's good. When I, when I look at it, you guys know, I see there's tons of color. It looks good in here. There's no yellow hue. There's no shadows. It looks good. Light brings illumination. It brings color. There's exuberance of color. And so God spoke. He said, let there be light. And it was a good thing. Light is good, guys. It's a good thing. It shines. It, it brings brightness. I don't know about you. In, in my house, it's really hard. On Wednesday night, we have a, a meeting, and I've got some nice LED bulbs in my in my living room, too. And, and sometimes people come over, and they ask me to turn it off because it, it's too bright. I said, I don't like dark, shadowy, cave-looking things. God said, let there be light. And he saw that the light was good. The light is good, and I believe, for two reasons. The light in you is good. I want to remind you of that. The light in you is good. And don't let the world tell you different. But sometimes we get convinced that the things that I believe is not good. The faith that I have in Jesus is not good. I, I shouldn't share it. And gee, God created light and he said, that's a good thing. It's a good thing who you are in Christ. It's a good thing what you believe. Don't be convinced. And so we're going to get into Matthew 5 in a little bit where, uh, where he said, hey, no, you don't shine a light and put it under a basket. No, the light in you is a good thing. The, the, the hope that you have in Christ, the message of Jesus, it's a good thing. The things that we stand for, the things that we believe, the things that we have faith in, it's a good thing. God created light and he said, oh, that's good. Second thing, stepping, not only is the light in us a good thing, but stepping into the light is a good thing. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. You ever get a new mirror with nice light, bright light in, the, in, the, in your mirror, and all of a sudden you see different things about your face you didn't know were there beforehand? <laughs> it's a little bit uncomfortable. Some of you guys have some really good friends, and they'll point out to you, hey, you got a little, you got a little something there, right? But it's a little bit uncomfortable. I want to tell you, stepping into the light is a good thing. Being exposed by the Word of God is a good thing. When we look into the Word of God, and all of a sudden, like, I don't know about you, but sometimes, okay, many times I work to look into the Word of God, and I'm like, I'm not like this. There's a light that shines on me, and all of a sudden it exposes to me. Come on, sometimes our eyes would do, 
I'm just going to put that away. But I want to convince us this morning that stepping into like stepping in to like confessing our sins, allowing the light to come into it, because the, the word of God says that what we do in darkness will actually be brought into the light. And the reason why it's brought into the light, this is the thing about Jesus. He's not a he doesn't want to condemn us. This, we have this wrong sometimes that when we when we when we get exposed for our sin or our wrongdoing or, or when we're not living like Christ would want us to live, and all of a sudden those things get exposed. Sometimes we want to hide more, or, or we're afraid, or, or it feels uncomfortable that we got exposed. But it's a good thing to get exposed because it says that, that what is done in darkness is not hidden. It will be, it will come out into the light. It will be confessed. It will be shouted from the rooftop, actually. So we got to celebrate being in the light. Why? Because. The character of God, the character of Jesus, is not one that condemns. It's not the one that holds us down. It's not one that beats us up. When sin is exposed, when His word, when the light comes to us, why is it so? Why does it happen? So that we are restored, and that we are made new, and that we are healed and made whole, because in Christ we are overcomers. Amen. We're not stuck in our sin. So, so two things. God said, let there be light. And what does that tell us? He, he says, let there be light. And he said it was a good thing. And it's a reminder to us, one, that the light in you is good. Don't hide it. Secondly, stepping into the light is good. Exposure, confession of sin. It's a good thing. It's meant for our wholeness. If God didn't start with let there be light, all of creation would have never existed. God brings light to us. He brings exposure to our wrongdoings, not so that we can, he can condemn us and beat us down, but that he can create something new in us and give us life through his spirit. In Matthew chapter 5, 14 through 16, as we read earlier, Jesus gives us insight that we have a part in playing, in fighting the battle between light and darkness. We have a part in playing in bringing glory to the Father. This is the reality of the kingdom of God. You are either for it or against it. We're either part of the light or part of the darkness. Jesus himself, this is what's fun thing, Jesus himself is known as the light. I love this. Jesus declares to us this morning, you are the light of the world. Some of us are aware of the reference where Jesus says that he was the light of the world. Let's look at that. John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, starting in verse, uh, sorry, chapter 38 in verse 12, Jesus says this, and I'm not in John, I'm in Luke. <laughs> it doesn't look right. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. The same identity statement that he makes about you and about me. You are the light of the world. Jesus says about himself, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not be in darkness, but will have the light of the world. Jesus showed us the way. We just finished our series called Live Like a King, and as we walked through that series, we were seeing how Jesus was the king who didn't have everything, or had everything, but he didn't hold it to his own advantage. He served us. He showed us the Beatitudes. He radically taught us how to live differently. In all of Jesus' life, he showed us the way. He was the light, the life he showed us that the light, what does the light do? The light always brings glory to the Father. Jesus shows up on the scene. He says, I am the light. I am the way. I want to teach you how to live in such a way that you bring glory to the Father. 
In John chapter 1, it's a glorious introduction of Jesus. And it's a little lengthier of a passage, but I want to read it this morning as we talk about Jesus being the light. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 13, this is what it says. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We can hold on to that. Darkness never overcomes light. Verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He was a witness to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave them right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Jesus I love this. Thinking about the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, God shows up on the scene. He speaks, let there be light. It says that all things were created. John here says, all things were created, but through that light, through him who was Jesus. And Jesus shows up and he shows us the way, the light. What does it say about God's word? It says his word is a lamp unto our feet. It shows us the way. What? The way to the Father. Jesus is that light. And the way that he lived showed us the way to glorify the Father, to believe on him, and to receive the right to become his children. We are the light of the world, just as Jesus was the light of the world. Now, sometimes when I think about that, and sometimes when I think about that, it gives me weight. And I think, wow, Jesus, you were the light. You showed the way. And I have that same responsibility. And so again, this morning, if there's light that comes with it, if there's conviction that comes, the Holy Spirit starts dealing with you and saying, hey, you know what, there's some ways that you aren't living like the light. Remember this, being in the light is a good thing. It's calling you to be like Christ, to live like Him. It's an invitation into Christ. Follow that invitation. Receive that this morning. In 1 Peter chapter 2, so God says, let there be light. He says, it's a good thing to be in the light. Jesus says, I am the light. I'm going to show you the way. Live like me. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, it reminds us that we were called out of darkness and we were called into light. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says this about us in this room, those who have put their faith in Jesus. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you were not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved church, Capital City Church, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that they may speak against you as evildoers. They may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of his visitation. You are the light of the world. Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. Jesus has called us out of darkness for a purpose this morning. That's what this whole series is about, being salt and light. We have been given an identity, and it's for a purpose, to live like Jesus, and in doing so, 
glorify the Father in heaven, and so that all those that are around may see what it's like to follow after Jesus, and they too will glorify their Father in heaven. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to look again at this passage and see what it is challenging us this morning. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. So what is Jesus saying to us this morning? The same way that Jesus' light exposes sin, we are ones by carrying the light, by living like Jesus, by sharing the message of Jesus, we expose sin. We show the way. We bring exuberant color and joy to the world around us. And so first of all, from Matthew chapter 5 this morning, first that we need to hear is that your light, it cannot be hidden. You are a city on a hill. You cannot be hidden. Your following after Jesus will show up in your life. I would say that it should show up in your life. It will change the way you live, and other people will see it. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing to live for Christ, to live like Jesus, to show the mercy and the grace and the wonderful glories of who He is, to pray for the sick and they'll be made whole, to have faith, to, to change your schedules because, hey, you're going to orient your life around Jesus. It's a good thing and it can't be hidden. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it being hidden. Don't worry about it being different than the people around you. It should be Jesus the same. It should be. You are a city. You are the light. You are now a child of God. You are now in the kingdom. And so don't live the same way. If you won't live the same way Jesus is saying. You can't. It will be known to those who are around us that you are a follower of Jesus. And it's a good thing. I want to repeat that over and over. It's a good thing. The second link, it says one, one, so this is kind of similar, but they are different. So the first one is, your light cannot be hidden. Then secondly, don't try to purposely hide your light. So your light can't be hidden. You're going to live differently because you're following after Jesus. And don't hide it. What does it say here, Jesus' words this morning? In verse 15. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. For they put it on a stand that it gives light to the whole house. The message this morning, last night we were praying, I just kept on praying this. Don't hide the light. God, I, I was just praying for each one of us last night. God, would we not hide our light? Would we not hide our joy? Would we not hide our message? Man, God has called us, last week we said it, as salt to preserve society. Like, we are part of what God is doing to restore the world to himself. Don't hide what you believe. Don't hide the hope that you have. Interact with unbelievers. Have I, have I said that enough yet, church? <laughs> I love you guys. I love when we get together for a missional community and we share a meal and we study the Bible. But man, I love game nights and going fishing with my Chinese unbelieving friend. Like, I, I love those things. Why? Because it, it's an opportunity for us to show light to the world around us. Don't hide who we are. Don't hide the hope we have. Don't allow the world to convince us to be silent. excited when I hear about people praying, hey God, in my workplace, who can I share your light with? That's what we're called to do, to be light to all around us, to give people hope for a restoration and a future. Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing. Let your light shine so others will see God. This is the result. 
This is the result. So when we are light and we allow our light just to shine, when we allow ourselves to be the gracious people, to be the merciful people, to be the ones who serve, the ones that are like Christ, the ones who pray for the sick, who share the gospel message, what happens? Others see God. When we are light, the Father is glorified. That's what it says in verse 16. Let others see your good works and they will give glory to your Father who is in heaven. What is this about? Why are we talking about being salt and light? Why is it so important that we have this identity? Why? Because others will see God and they will glorify Him. Why? When, are we tired of the world around you falling apart? Are we tired of things looking corrupt? Are we tired of, of sin around us seemingly getting worse and worse? What is our, what is our response to it? Be the light. Be the light. Be the difference. And they will see the Father and they will glorify Him. They will come to Him. And they too will receive this good news. What does it look like to show the light? What does it look like to be the light? Man, show concern for your neighbors. I would be really practical. Show concern for your neighbors. There's a mama, mama down the hall. She's getting ready to move. We told her just a, a this this week. Hey, tell us when you're moving. You cannot lift a box on your own. Show concern. Why? Because Jesus showed concern for the least of these. The things that you do for the least of these, you did to Christ Jesus. Show the light. Well, it's like serving. Then we have uh, an opportunity here in August, the, uh, the first Saturday of August. The community here in uh, Sherwood Forest, all, all, sorry, Sherwood Forest and Oh, I'm losing this. Oh, sorry. sorry, I had this in my notes. Um, anyway, the neighborhood here, every August, they do a ice cream social. And we as a church have never been to the ice cream social. So I told everybody, hey, we're going to camp. We're also going to the ice cream social this year. I will give the dates to you guys next weekend. Why? Because we want to serve our community. And I said, hey, what can you guys do? Uh, what can we do to serve our community in just a practical way? Whether it's purchasing the ice cream for the ice cream social, we're going to pick up a trap, we're going to find something to do to serve people. Because then we're going to be doing what Jesus did, serving the least, serving people around us, being the light. And when we be the light, they will see our good deeds. And Jesus says here, they will what? They will glorify the Father in heaven. It doesn't have to be complicated. Everybody doesn't have to like, be able to preach a, a five-point sermon. Just serve others around us. Show who Jesus is. Be merciful. Follow after Him. And they will see the good works that we do. And they will glorify the Father in Heaven. It will give us opportunity to share the hope that we have. In, in 2 Peter, it says, When they try to speak bad of us, they'll all of a sudden find there's nothing bad to say. Just begin to glorify the Father in heaven. So again, this morning, you are the light of the world. It's a good thing. Be the light. Let's pray this morning. <clears throat> Father, I am so grateful for the opportunity again to share your word with your church. And we are the light of the world. And it's amazing to think that we have the same identity as you, Jesus. That we have an opportunity to show the world around us the way to heaven, the way to the Father. God, I pray that each one of us in this room would, would God, walk in that identity. Lord, first of all, that we wouldn't hide ourselves. But God, that we would shine your light around. Father, give us practical ways. Father, show us our neighbors. Show us those people in need. Show us those people who are in need of hope. And, and God, may we uh, walk in the opportunity to show them the Father. God, I thank you for what you're doing in our church to stir us in action. And God, I pray that we would respond rightfully. In Jesus' name. I want to encourage you, last night, um, at the end of our prayer, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin prayed, and he prayed this way. He said, God, I, I pray that we would humbly accept your plan for our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen.
You know, as we have this series right now of salt and light, sometimes it can be a little heavy because it's like, oh, there's something that I have to do. And sometimes that gets weighty on us. Like, oh, man, there's one more thing, one more person I have to talk to, one more way that I have to show love. 